Black Walnut, otherwise known as Juglans nigra, is a deciduous tree native to North America. It is one of the most important lumber species in North America. Now I consider it to be THE indicator of a Carolinian zone. As if you see black walnuts in Ontario, you are definitely in the Carolinian zone, or Ottawa. I remember this tree from my youth. I would often use the nuts in lieu of a golf ball and smack them over my neighbor's fence. For Or that time when I rented a house in Simcoe that had a black walnut tree on it, and I had to wear a helmet in the fall when cutting the lawn so I didn't get knocked out by some nut. I also remember parking my car in Amherstburg, only to see a sign that said watch for falling nuts. And then I decided to move my car to a more safer location. Anyways, enough of memories. Let's dive into more of this awesome tree, as this tree is more than just nuts. What it looks like. This is a medium to large tree growing on average 70 to 90 feet tall with a trunk of 2 to 3 feet wide. When in optimal growing conditions, they can grow to over 150 feet and 8 feet in diameter. In the forest, they have straight trunks that lead to a narrow canopy. Some of the most magnificent looking black walnuts, though, are growing in open settings where the open crown become widespread and the trunk straight for a few feet before breaking off into all different ways. Look for the alternative leaf arrangements. The leaves are pinnately compound, meaning each leaf is divided into smaller leaflets, 14 to 22 on one leaf. The leaves are yellowish green and smooth above and faintly hairy below. The leaflets are usually missing the terminal or end leaflet, or it is just poorly formed. Fall colors are not the most vibrant, but a nice golden yellow. The flowers develop in April and early June, most likely late spring here in Ontario. Male flowers are a long catkin, whereas the female flowers are on short spikes near the trig as seen here. The flowers are wind pollinated. In the winter, one can identify the tree by the tree scar which looks like an upside down shamrock, or in my opinion, more of a cute face. Hey there cutie! Also, the buds are fuzzy and smaller than the tree scar. If you cut a branch in half, you'll find the pith to be chambered compared to something like an ash. Now I don't encourage this as your sole way of identifying. Also, a good way to ID one in the winter is finding all the leaf stems lying on the ground. The bark is furred and dark in color. Butternuts are lighter in color. The bark gets darker with age. The fruits are round and not sticky, and the nut is round with smooth edges. Whereas butternuts are elongated and sticky. Word of caution, the flesh of this fruit will stain. You'll learn quickly not to pick them up with your bare hands when harvesting them. Also, a word of caution, this fruit is big, like the size of an orange. Be on the lookout, as falling walnuts can do some minor damage to your car. Even worse when you get hit in the head with one. I should also mention the nuts are edible, and there are a few suppliers of nuts. But due to it being unpredictable when the trees will produce numerous nuts in mass years, and very few in other years, it is hard for many companies to stay in business, unless they have vast storage, so many have gone out of business over the years. Hammond's Walnuts is one company that's still in business. They live for over 150 years. However, there are reports of them living for over 300 years in a couple places in the United States. I should mention that it takes about 12 to 15 years for a tree to bear fruit, and at least 20 to 30 years to get a decent crop. The seed crops are irregular, with a large production every so often during a mast year. The trees conspire amongst themselves to have mast years, and we do not yet understand how they do this, nor have we learned to intercept the message where it grows. It is widespread throughout eastern United States into the Carolinian zone in Ontario. It prefers fertile sun and deep well-drained neutral soils. How it spreads. As already mentioned, black walnuts are heavy, so the main method of seed dispersal is by squirrels. Some will say that squirrels forget where they put all the nuts until a tree appears. I don't believe this. Squirrels are very good at the one task they do, collecting and storing seeds. They use triangulations to remember where their seeds are. I refuse to believe they forget. Sometimes squirrels die, and other times I feel the squirrel did it on purpose. Maybe it didn't need the food in the end. Maybe squirrels know that by leaving some seeds some years, they will have food for future generations. Something I wish humans understood. Also, another way I see these being dispersed is I often see them floating down rivers and growing along the shorelines, as they do tend to float. Value to wildlife. 
Black walnuts are an excellent wildlife tree. The leaves host over a hundred species of caterpillars and moss that are an important food source for birds. Side note, caterpillars are some of the best creatures to get energy from plants up the food chain. The nuts also feed mice, voles, chipmunks, squirrels, raccoons, turkeys, and even black bears. Deer can palate the leaves, but not a preferred food source over the winter. Disadvantages One of the disadvantages of the black walnut tree is the roots produce a chemical called juglone that inhibits metallic activity in many plants. Most native species have evolved alongside black walnuts and are not bothered by the juglone chemical, whereas non-natives struggle. I recommend checking out the website Landscaping and Gardening Around Walnuts and Other Juglone Producing Plants that was put out by Penn State before planting your garden. For instance, tomatoes do not like juglone. Uh, the juglone can be found in the leaves and husk of the fruit as well as many parts of the tree, so try to avoid mulch and, and waste from black walnuts when planting your garden. Diseases Thousand Cankers Black Walnut Disease this disease is native to the western United States, and since the tree is mostly found on the eastern United States, it is not much of a concern at the moment, besides in Tennessee where it is starting to spread. The disease causes yellowing and wilting, branch die-off and general decline, and the tree may die within 3-5 to five years. The disease is caused by a combination of fungus, Geosmithia morbid fungus, and a walnut tree beetle. The fungus attaches itself to the beetle, and when the beetle burrows into the branches to feed and reproduce, the fungus gets put inside. It then forms small black lesions called cankers. Eventually, the cankers merge together and girdle the branch, which prevents the flow of vital nutrients throughout the tree. Thus leads to death. Uses As mentioned earlier, there are several companies that sell the nuts as well as you can harvest them yourself. Raw nuts have an interesting sweet and earthy taste to them that goes great on top of desserts like ice cream. Dip them in sugar syrup and enjoy it as a candy, or even grind it to a meal and make it into flour. Here you can see the uh, calories. I also hear you can make syrup like you would maple syrup with black walnut sap. While I have not tried this, it looks to be fairly expensive with one fluid ounce costing around $7 US. Bartender, I'll have a shot of your finest black walnut syrup, please. Black walnuts contain a high concentration of chemicals called tannins. These tannins can reduce pain and swelling and dry up body fluids such as mucus. They contain a higher level of antioxidants and polyunsaturated fatty acids than English walnuts, making them quite useful in reducing the risk of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. The bark and leaves have been used medicinally to treat skin diseases and skin wounds. The bark has also been chewed to help with toothache pain. A bark infusion can be made into a laxative. However, the scientific evidence of these claims is a bit lacking, so I can't confirm on how well they work. The juglone chemical can be even used as a pesticide. Natives have used the green hulls as even a fish poison. The juglone mixed with some of the tannins in the hull make a great natural dye used for clothing, and some natives, or elderly folks, have used the dye to add a darker color to their graying hair. And lastly, the most important use of black walnuts is live edge tables. No, maybe not. Okay, furniture and veneers. The lumber is highly sought for this reason, as it has a natural resistance to decay in insects. A rich brown lustrous heartwood with a unique grain pattern that is just simply stunning. It demands a higher price point due to its increasing demand and decreasing supply. It is ranked as one of the most durable woods. It is easily worked on with power and hand tools and has excellent machining properties. Black walnut trees are so highly sought after and command such a price that there have been lawsuits and criminal activities over stolen trees. Even reports of folks using helicopters and the cover of darkness to go in and steal their neighbor's trees. Value. Back in 1978, a veneer company paid $39,000 for a single black walnut tree. Today, trees can be harvested for as much as $12,000. For one inch thick walnut, it is currently $12 a bird foot. The walnuts themselves are also quite valuable, with a going rate of $5 a pound. An acre of black walnuts can produce a thousand pounds, so there is $5,000 an acre right there. I have currently seen black walnuts selling for as high as $17 a pound in the store. As you can see, 
The black walnut tree is quite the species, and I'm always enamored every time I see one or see its lumber being used in furniture or design. Hopefully, you can appreciate this tree as much as I can, and hopefully, you learn something new. Hope you enjoyed the video, and give me a thumbs up and leave a comment if you want to see more tree videos like this. See you around.